All right, we've got our orbit and force question. Let's just take a quick look here. Um, oh, man. Again, my thoughts with this. Whenever they have the little satellite path, um, I want to draw the force going towards the center of the Earth and that it's the gravity force. That's just what I would... Oh, my gosh, that's exactly what they asked us to do. Isn't that exciting? And, of course, the force on the satellite is exerted by Earth's gravity. Now, um, you know that low orbit satellites are in a nearly circular orbit. Um, what do they want us to do? We want to show that the radius of the Earth's satellite orbit is approximately 6 times 10 to the 6th meter. Um, so... Um, The idea here is um, low Earth means only a few hundred kilometers above the Earth. So the distance between the equator and the pole is about 10,000 kilometers. So let's just be clear. What that means is that um, if 2 pi r um, is the circumference. Um, let's just say one more thing. So the arc between the equator and the pole is 10,000 kilometers. So here's the Earth, and what we're saying is just one-fourth of the circumference is 10,000 kilometers. So in other words, um, the radius we'll figure out like this. Um, 2 times pi times r is the circumference, and that's going to be 10,000 kilometers um, times 10 to the third meters per kilometer. And we've got four of those to make up the circumference. So when we solve, we're actually going to get that the circumference is about um, 6 times 10 to the sixth meters when we work out this math. Awesome. Um, so again, you don't want to actually use the radius of the Earth. Um, it's important to kind of go ahead and solve it. So, um, next thing. What do we have? Um, the satellite's acceleration. Ew, okay. So, um, acceleration is the same as a stone. So let's actually figure out why would this be a good assumption to assume that the satellite's actually accelerating at free fall in a circle. So let's be clear. Um, so G normally on Earth is capital G, mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth squared. And we know the radius of the Earth is about 6 times 10 to the 6 meters. Fine. So now, let's say we're several hundred kilometers up. Hundred means ten squared. So several hundred um, means, uh, so, and that means ten to the fifth meters. So g for the satellite is going to end up being g mass of the Earth over six times ten to the sixth plus. Um, 10 to the fifth for that extra height if we're doing an estimate. Now that seems like quite a bit but that ends up basically being um, GME over say 6.1 times 10 to the fifth times 10 to the sixth squared. Not a big difference. And then for two, it says um, is not okay. Is of a different mass to the stone, um, and there it's just that idea that G M M over R squared equals M times A, and what we're saying is that acceleration is independent of the satellite mass. 
Now let's go ahead and actually estimate the speed of the satellite. So what we can say is g equals v squared over r. Um, and in this case we can actually say 10, right, equals v squared over um, 6 times 10 to the 6th. Um, or in other words, v squared is 6 times 10 to the 7th and V ends up being about 8 times 10 to the third meters per second. And um, to get the period, let's just remember that V is 2 pi R over T, and that's going to be um, 2 pi times 6 times 10 to the sixth over the period. And we got that V um, is 8 times 10 cubed, so we can actually arrange when we solve for t, we'll get about 80 minutes. If you want to work in seconds, we're going to get t is about um, yeah, 5 times 10 to the third seconds, and then when you divide that by 6, you're going to get about 80 minutes. Just so you know. All right, so that is question number 13.